This is the screencast for TKW message test harness. Exception scenarios can be executed using message test harness tool, which is used to simulate spine. It programmatically responds to a supplier's system's messaging with a predefined message based on incoming parameters. It is typically used to demonstrate or test a system's response to error conditions which cannot be recreated in an environment because other users would be adversely affected. However, it can also be used for positive message, message responses. MTH used to be a standalone Java program which has now been integrated into the toolkit workbench. Previous users will recognize much of what I will show you. However, there are important differences. There are other screencasts available for the installation and use of the TKW tool. Firstly, the structure is under the TKW directory. If we have a look in the config, we will see spine MTH. Here we have the directories which MTH uses. The ones of note will be the simulator config. This is the directory in which all of the rule sets sit. Here are ones for ETP, GPES, PDS and they also have associated template directories. We also have the simulator saved messages directory. This is where all the synchronous messaging logs are created and stored. And the transmitter sent messages, which is where all the asynchronous responses from MTH to the system under test are stored. The tkw.properties file stores all the properties for the MTH. Things to note within here are the toolkit listen address and listen port. This is a listen address and listen port for MTH. We have the configuration file here. The tool comes pre-configured to run PDS 2008A and this is the configuration that I'll be demonstrating. However this can be changed to any of the rule sets which I've just shown you. Also we have the ACID and CPA ID of the MTH. In this guide I'll be demonstrating with the PDS 2008A as this is the one used by most suppliers but the process remains the same for other domains. There are individual written guides for certain domains within the simulator config directory. The first step that should be taken is to configure and run both the client and the host systems using the TKW tool. This has the advantage that we can then be certain that MTH is working correctly before starting connection with the system under test. The PDS 2008A and all the other MTH configurations for TKW MTH work out of the box with the MTH console. We can find the MTH console by looking in the contrib directory under additional tools TKW MTH console and clicking the dot bat will open it up. The TKW console is used purely for transmitting spine messages and receiving synchronous and asynchronous responses from MTH. In this arrangement it is acting as a surrogate system under test. If we first have a look at the controls tab, here we can see that we have the responder address and port and this is the address for the message test harness. The listener address and port is the address on which the MTH console listens for any MTH asynchronous responses. The server admin port and the set new rules and responses button are used to reconfigure MTH on the fly. This can be used to test delayed responses to asynchronous messages. Turning our attention to the I.O. tab, the input message pane is used by the mes message to be sent to MTH. The output panes on the bottom show synchronous and asynchronous responses respectively from the MTH 
to the console. The file menu option allows input and output messages to be saved to disk. So first to start MTH up we go to the spine MTH directory and here I've created a, uh, a dot batch file which if I open it up calls the Java tkw.jar which is two directories up in simulator mode using tkw.properties as the properties file. Double click on that and we can see here that it's listening for spine messages on 4001 localhost and there's also 4003 which is an admin port but don't worry about that. Now to choose a message to send to MTH we provide an extensive set of test messages which can be sent into MTH in order to show that it's working for each of the values which give a particular response. These are located within the contrib directory, spine test messages, the MTH test messages and the 2008A ones are in that directory. The one I'll be choosing is the advanced trace with the QUPA iron 1102. And we can see that, that message appears in the top pane. It's got a full wrapping with the HTTP and MIME boundaries. So if we send that, we receive a 202 accepted synchronous response and the asynchronous advanced trace response here. And if we look back at the spine MTH directory we can see that in the simulator saved messages we have the incoming advanced trace and the outgoing response, the advanced trace response. Now I'll demonstrate a message which has a negative response. So here again, so opening up the test messages This time I'll select a synchronous message, for example a simple trace, and this one will select one which returns a SOAP fault. Here's the message at the top. Pressing send. Here we have the SOAP fault response with the 500. Again if we look at the saved messages we only have got saved messages within the simulator saved messages this time because there's no asynchronous response. And here is the incoming message and the so fault response. Now that the MTH client and the TKW MTH responder are confirmed to be working together correctly, it is necessary to substitute the supplier system for the MTH client. In order to do that, the system under test could be configured to use the same address and ports which the console used and no further configuration would be necessary. However, this is not usually desirable or possible. In order for MTH to be reconfigured, the TKW properties file and the SDS file will need to be updated. Here is the TKW properties file. It might be necessary to update the listen port. 
As the MTH has no access to SDS, the details which are normally retrieved for an endpoint for a particular interaction are stored in a static XML file. And that's stored in simulator config here. You can see in this SDS reference file we have highlighted here the incoming interaction for the advanced trace with the ACID, CPAID, interaction endpoint and also the response and the outgoing with an ACID CPAID interaction and the asynchronous destination endpoint. Configuring TKW MTH in this manner should allow the system under test to fully test exception and normal paths in the clear without access to the spine. There's another screencast on validation of spine messages using Visual Validator.